As many shooters know, Sarah Bullets uses stepped or multiple BC values to match the drag characteristics of their bullets better than a single G1 or G7 BC value can. In this video, I'll use Ballistic Explorer to show you some of the properties of stepped BCs you may not know about. I'll show you how to test ballistic software to see if it properly implements stepped BCs and how to get better results in the field if you use software on a mobile device that doesn't support stepped BCs. So what's a stepped BC? If we look at the Sierra website, I'm going to use their 168 grain, 30 caliber, hollow point bow tail match king. And if you scroll down to look at the BC, you'll see that they give a word description. And so Sierra uses the G1 drag model, and they also use the Metro standard conditions, which is a SAMI standard. And they have four steps for this particular bullet. So at velocities of 2600 feet per second and above, they have a BC of 0.462. Between 26 and 2100 feet per second, the BC changes to 0.447, then changes again below 2100 down to 1600 feet per second, and then finally 0 0.405 below 1600 feet per second. So in Ballistic Explorer, we use a bracket diagram to show the same information so you can see we have the same information over here. So I have this bullet set up in Ballistic Explorer in Trace 2 over here and they've labeled it the S2200 which is the catalog number of that bullet, Step BC, and I've given it a muzzle velocity of 3000 feet per second. So this character here indicates that we have a multiple or stepped BCs. So if you click on this icon here with the brackets, you can see the same information that we have over here in the bullet library. And so there's up to five steps on some of their bullets. Some of them only have two. So once we get down to zero feet per second here, anything below that doesn't matter. So we just go with that. So I also have the standard metro conditions set up. I do have a crosswind of 30 miles an hour. We're going to experiment with head and tailwinds here to see what effect those have on the steps. So then we also are going to graph this out. And so here we have the velocity graph for that particular bullet starting out at 3,000 feet per second out to 500 yards. And remember the step over here, we're changing the BC value at 2,600 feet per second. So if we come here and we look at about 2,600 feet per second, as close as I can get to it here, where you don't really see a step. And that's because these steps that this particular step is about 3%. I don't think any of the Sierra steps are over 5%. And so it's just too little to see. So in order to do some experiments, we're going to go and exaggerate the step substantially. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up the trace two window again. And we're going to come in and change step number two. We're going to go from a 0.447 down to a 0.147. Drastic step that you would never see in a real bullet. So when I click on the graph, it'll update. Now we can see the step. So one of the criticisms of using step BCs to match an actual bullet to a standard drag function like G1 is that when we come up on these steps here, you can see we're almost at 200 yards, 199 yards where the step takes place, that our trajectory predictions would also step. So even though we have this exaggerated step here, let's go ahead and look at drop. And you can see out here at 200 yards where the step takes place, we don't see a step. Gravity hasn't changed even though the drag on the bullet has drastically changed. So it's not something that we need to worry about. A stepped or multiple BC is a valid way of matching the characteristics of an actual bullet to a standard drag function, be it G1 or G7 or any other standard drag function. So now what I want to do is show you the effect of temperature on step BCs. And to do that, I'm going to go away and set up all three traces. And then we're going to come back and 
look at velocity here with a lower temperature and a higher temperature and see what effect it has on this exaggerated step. So here I have the same values in all three traces. Each trace is a complete shooting situation. The only difference is that I have the temperature set in trace 1 to 19 degrees Fahrenheit, 59 in trace 2, which is the standard metro, standard temperature, and 99 degrees Fahrenheit in trace 3. So now I'm going to come back over the graph, and when I click on this, it'll update. And so here we can see the effect. At 19 degrees Fahrenheit, the speed of sound has slowed down. So the reason why the step changes is that these values that Sierra is listing here in their multiple or step BC are really based on the speed of sound as it would be under standard conditions. So the drag of the bullet changes with the speed of sound in air. So when we change the temperature, we change both the air density, but we also change the speed of sound. And so the speed of sound decreases when the temperature decreases. So you can see here that this value would also decrease. To have the same Mach number, the absolute value would decrease. And that's why you see the step for trace 1 at 19 Fahrenheit moves down here about uh, into the 2480s. Now when we increase the uh, temperature, the speed of sound increases. And so here we can see that the temperature has gone up and the speed of sound has gone up. So in order for the step to have the same Mach number as it did under standard conditions, the velocity is going to increase. So you can do this same experiment in any ballistic software to make sure that they're properly implementing the change in temperature as it relates to stepped BCs. Now I'm going to go and set up to do headwind and tailwind and we'll see how that what that looks like. So now I've set the temperatures in all three traces back to 59 degrees and I've set a headwind of 30 miles per hour in trace 1. 30 miles per hour is 44 feet per second. We have our crosswind in trace 2 just like before and we have a tailwind in trace 3. And I come over to the graph And when I click on it, it'll update. So we have our headwind in red, tailwind in blue. And so we can see the effect on where the steps occur. This is because velocities are measured in ballistic software relative to the ground. So if you measure your muzzle velocity, your gun and your chronograph are going to be mounted to the ground. So that velocity is going to be relative to the ground. And if you're shooting at most targets, they're going to be attached to the ground. And so your target velocity is going to be on the ground. But the drag on a bullet is dependent on air velocity. And so with a headwind of 44 feet per second, we only need a ground velocity of uh, 44 feet per second less than 2600 for the step to occur. And so with a tailwind, we need a higher ground velocity to get the same wind velocity. So this is an additional experiment you can do with any ballistic software to make sure it properly implements head and tailwinds relative to stepped BCs. So what happens if you have software on your phone and you want to use it in the field and it doesn't support stepped BCs or you discover that it doesn't properly support stepped BCs? Well, we can convert a step BC to a single BC, and we can usually get good results with that. We may be able to get even better results than expected if we find a drag function that appears to match the steps that Sierra has given to their particular bullet. And I'll set that up, and we'll look at that. So now I've set the uh, BC back to its proper value here at 0.447. Done that in all three of these traces. I've also set them all to a crosswind. They also all have the same temperature. What I want to do now is find a single BC that's going to give me uh, the same trajectory as the multiple BC or as close as we can get. Now there's two things no bullet manufacturer knows about how you're going to shoot and that is what muzzle velocity you're actually going to use and what range you want to shoot to. 
So for this demo, I'm using 3,000 feet per second. We're going to say I'm going to shoot to 1,000 feet. So in order to convert this multiple BC to a single BC, I'm going to click on the button here, G1. This brings up my select drag table dialog. All the standard drag tables are up at the top. Customs are below that. So I'm going to use the G1. I'm going to click OK down here. And that brings up my uh, conversion. And so we're going to use the equal time of flight to range. This is a method developed by Dr. Ken Ayler. And so basically I'm telling the software, give me the single G1 BC that gives me the same time of flight at 1,000 yards as the multiple BC. I click on that. You'll see it calculated 0.442. I'm going to put that up here. So this is the G1 0.442. And so now I'm going to come over to trace 3, and here we're going to go ahead and use the G7. And I just double click on that, brings up my conversion again, same thing, but now we're based on the G7. What G7 BC will give me the same time of flight at 1,000 yards as the multiple BC? Click on this, so it's calculated 0.224. So I'm going to change the name up here. So this is a G7, 0.224. Now when I come over to the graph here and click on it, you know, update. <clears throat> so we can see here our velocities are very similar. And let's go ahead and look at drop. And you can see we get virtually the same drop out here. And uh, let's take a look at some numbers down here. So I'm going to come down to our Explore Traces. And we're looking at velocity. <clears throat> and so you can see if out at 1,000 yards, we're 25 feet per second difference, and we're 11 feet per second difference between the G7 and the, and the uh, multiple BC. In Ballistic Explorer, we can just bring up our comparator. So I can do find the maximum difference between trace 1 and trace 2. Trace 1 is the single G1 BC. Trace 2 is the uh, multiple BC. And so we have a 24.8 feet per second difference at 1,000 yards. We can do the same thing between trace 2 and trace 3. So now we're comparing the stepped BC with the G7, so it's only 10.4 feet per second off, and that's at 199 yards. So let's look at drop down here. And so we're going to look at it in our site adjustment units and do the same thing. Let's look at the single G1 to the stepped. So I'm off by 0.294 MOA at almost 900 yards. So that's about one click on a scope. And so let's look at the G7. So trace 2 to trace 3, we have the step BC to the single value G7. Just a tenth of an MOA off at 728 yards. It's closer than in every other yardage, out to 1,000. And so you can see how you could use this multiple BC with uh, great accuracy if you find that you can't use it on your mobile device in the field. So I want to show you why the G7 BC value better matches the step BC. To do that I'm going to come up to the tools menu and select our drag analyzer and so the drag analyzer shows you the actual drag on the bullet so we can see the steps and um, I'm going to bring up the G1, the single G1 in trace 1 and you can see here we started out with a single value that gave us more drag at the higher velocity, the same in the mid velocities and lower at the uh, lower velocities. You can see how these steps are moving to having more drag in lower velocities and that's typical of a G7 if you're familiar with that. And so let's go ahead and bring up the G7. And so here you can see <clears throat> we're actually correcting the steps are actually correcting the drag to better match the G7 drag model. And so that's why we're getting a better result 
when we match with a single G7 versus a single G1. And that's one of the things you can do in Ballistic Explorer. You can experiment with different standard drag functions and find the single value in a particular drag function that best matches a stepped VC. The other thing I want to show you is that uh, not all um, bow tail bullets will have the same uh, better match at G7. <clears throat> See here we're starting off with a higher BC and we're getting a lower BC as we get into lower velocities. But if we go to a game king instead of a match king, you'll see just the opposite effect. So that just shows you that just because it's a bow tail doesn't mean it matches a G7 better than a G1. And I thank you for watching this video.